Hello. Can everyone hear me okay? Awesome. <laughs> Thanks for coming, everyone. Um, yeah, so this is going to be a bit of an update over the last uh, release cycle, what everyone's been up to in the community. Um, and yeah, so hopefully you find it interesting. Uh, for anyone who's new here, uh, maybe doesn't know what the FreeDesk SDK is, um, it's a runtime for Flatpak applications. It was started out of Flatpak. Um, it's used as the base for KDE and GNOME runtimes and possibly elementary OS, maybe. Um, we, last year, we switched to using BuildStream to build the latest release, which is 18.08. Um, we're hopefully going to release a new version soon, so we changed it to X, as <laughs> Alex has noticed. Uh, and yeah, this is, uh, the, the FreeDesk SDK is not an endorsement of any particular platform or a selection of technologies um, from the FreeDesk organization. It's just a tool that we think is cool and yeah, is used by Flatpak apps. So the first thing um, we sort of had happen over the last release cycle was the update um, policy. Um, and this is mainly due to ABI stability checks. Um, so we've worked quite hard on trying to improve that and also getting the policy updated around all that to ensure um, we, we ensure ABI stability for Flatpak apps. Um, so we use a tool called uh, LibAbigail, which someone in our community implemented. Um, and that, that was used to verify backwards um, compatibility whenever we made an update or we, we patched something in the SDK. Um, but we encountered some issues with this. Uh, and this was that some users were managing to install and update applications, um, Flatpak applications on the system without updating the runtime. So if we added new symbols in an updated package and they didn't update the runtime, than the application uh, was expecting a, a different API. Um, and then also extensions used by KD and GNOME, because Flatback has this concept of extensions which can be loaded in uh, at runtime. Um, they were also based off all the free desk SDKs. And so, so basically what we've done now is we've um, enabled LibAbigail to check forward compatibility. And we've also slowed down the update process to only bug fixes and CVE checks, so there's a lot less churn. Um, and that seems to have uh, solved the problem. Yeah, so that, that's uh, quite cool. <laughs> um, another quite cool thing we've worked on is um, manifest files and, and uh, CVE reports. So we've tried to uh, automate this process as much as we can in our uh, CI. Um, so if you like shell into a uh, in shell into the runtime, uh, under user manifest.json, you can see a manifest file of every package that's inside um, the runtime. That will have all the versions, um, the SHA, the URLs, um, and any CVEs that have been patched in that module. So if you shell into a specific runtime, you know exactly what software is inside there, where it came from, and you know you can verify and check versions as well if you need to do that entire inside your shell, which is probably good for people who are using things like Silverblue and stuff if they're using it for development. Um, we also then um, patched our build stream files to have CPE data so people can write in what, what CVEs have been patched and things like that. Um, and then now we have a nightly CI job that goes through each package in FreeDesk SDK and checks against the latest version of uh, CVE database. And we'll look for the vendors inside uh, the CPE data. And it, if it's not patched, it'll raise a, a report. Uh, and that looks like this. Um, so we can check this sort of every day uh, and see if any new CVEs are coming in. Um, this, this, this list is a few on there that are disputed and stuff like that. And there's a few that you know will still need uh, some work with upstream. But yeah, we're, we're aware of what what vulnerabilities are in the SDK, and we're, we're, we're not saying this is like the silver bullet, like we've solved it, but we just think it's a good start, um, and it gives us some information to try and work and improve security in FreeDesk SDK. Um, <coughs> a quite sort of thing, um, cool thing that we sort of take for granted is like building from source. Um, so we did some like statistics on that, and we had quite a big um, sort of uh, milestone in the project to encourage people to go and find elements inside FreeDesk SDK and convert them to using Git source rather than tarballs and stuff. Um, so we did some statistics on that, and we worked out like 62% of FreeDesk SDK is built from Git sources, so that's quite cool. Um, and that was sort of linked back to Shree's talk yesterday when we were talking about not releasing tarballs and stuff anymore, so I just found that quite interesting. And then 34% is still tarballs, and that's because of a lot of the bootstrapping process and, and stuff, and circular dependencies, so you solve that um, using the tarballs. Um, and yeah, we can use also BuildStream to trigger a nightly CI job as well as a CVE report. It'll go away and check for later, latest tags on, uh, on software inside the SDK. So we can always track for latest releases. 
And if upstream changes, billstream will, will error on that and, and alert us that uh, the history has been rewritten, which is quite a good uh, security feature again. And then another thing that a lot of people are probably happy about is we managed to reduce the size of the SD, SDK um, quite considerably. Valentin did some cool work with FlatHub statistics to get this data. Um, we are looking to try and improve this in the future and maybe track this as part of CI to make sure we're not going to blow uh, free database SDK over the next release cycle. Um, but yeah, you can see we got it, got it down from like 5 gigabytes to 1.5 um, gigabytes, so it's quite, a, quite an improvement if people are downloading um, the SDK or the debug symbols for debugging and developing applications. So yeah, that'll save your, uh, <laughs> your bandwidth problems. Um, uh, I think it's LLVM. We reduced this, the. We made, made the, we use my use J1 just for LLVM. So the debug symbol, but there were also <laughs> things in the um, uh, the drop in the, the SDK part is uh, we remove lots of uh, static libraries. Uh, uh, yeah. And then yeah, here we have uh, removal. So we've actually deprecated a few things in the SDK. Uh, we had to get rid of OpenSSL 1.0, and that ultimately said when, when we got rid of uh, Kerberos. Uh, we also got rid of Python 2, which is quite a mission. Um, there's quite a few things that did rely on it, but that means we have to get rid of Mercurial, um, which if you're still using it, then <laughs> it's your pain. <laughs> uh, Inner tools, because GetText still pro like, basically provides everything you need there now, so we've removed that. And QMake, because we work with the KDE community, and they said, um, they'd rather people use their SDK than use free desktop for any sort of KD related stuff. It makes more sense. Um, yeah, so we, we removed uh, QMate. And I'm going to pass over to Valentin because he's going to discuss some new architecture stuff. So we had um, someone from the community who brought us a, a builder. Uh, it's a temporary for the moment, but we will get uh, better builders in the future. So we were able to add uh, PowerPC which is a nice thing. Uh, so for the moment, is not, we are not planning to, uh, to have this to be used for Flatpak in general, but we want to enable uh, PowerPC users to be able to contribute and do the things, and the first thing was to get the runtime. So, but uh, we hope that in the future we'll get uh, uh, builders for GNOME and, and KDE and Flathub so that we will be able to distribute applications for uh, power PC. Um, we have changed something with Mesa. Uh, so Mesa is the uh, drivers for the uh, GPUs. Um, we wanted to uh, be able to update Mesa drivers uh, uh, a lot because uh, there are always GPUs that are released that are not supported by older version, and it's very important to uh, have it. Uh, if you buy a new laptop, you might not be able to just work on what is released and you have to wait two years, that's not acceptable. So we really want to put everything as, a, as soon as possible. So um, uh, there was already a lot of things that was um, separated from the SDK to the runtime uh, because we were using libgl, vnd and uh, for the, everything that is gl. And for Vulkan, we use also a loader, so this is, we have a, a, a library that will load the drivers, the correct drivers. Uh, so that's what it is. Then for libdrm, we separated the main library to the backends. And uh, for GBM, which is a bit special because it only works for Mesa, there is no, uh, no other provider for backends there. Then we just put a dummy library for the SDK so that you can link to, but you will load uh, uh, at runtime, the one from the extension. Uh, we added cross compilers. So one of the main problem we had uh, was uh, we don't provide multi-lib support because we really don't want, I mean, for most of cases, we don't want to have multi-lib um, to be able to build for 32 bit. But there are a few cases where we need, uh, for Wine, for Steam, so for Wine, we want to build Wine for Litris, for example, and, and for Steam, we might want to, the application might need some extra libraries that are not in the runtime that we want to build in Flatpak Builder. Um, so that was, that were the, the main reason. Also, we have noticed that 
people using uh, um, uh, GNOME Builder could uh, use QME to build for ARM. So it was, we saw that some people wanted to build for ARM from their Intel machine. So that was also something that we wanted to just cover with something that ran a bit faster than using QMU. So uh, we have multi-arch runtimes. So that means that you can have runtimes for several architecture in the same time without having a sys root. So you can still have the hacks where you use QMU for some binaries and native for some others. So that's uh, that's very nice. Uh, to be able to use your cross compiler, it's very easy. You just use those to build extension, so we have several for the di several name for the different architectures. So you have one part which is the runtime itself, so all the libraries because you will, will need to link to them, and the other one is a, uh, uh, the to chain, so the compiler. Uh, yes. uh, we have started to publish Docker images on Docker. Uh, we build Docker images. We can also build OCI uh, uh, images. Uh, for the month, we have uh, three images, the platform, the SDK, and the debug. The debug is the SDK plus the will be a debug info. And uh, we can, you can, of course, use a Docker file to build on top of that, but you can also use BuildStream and make uh, more precise images and reuse the things that we use to make those Docker images. Um, do you want to do that? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, We've done quite a lot over the last release, um, but we've still got quite a lot of stuff that we want to we want to do, and it's kind of why we give the talk to try and generate some interest and see if people can help us out as well. Uh, it's not a done project; it's always changing. There's always updates and stuff to do. Um, so in the future, um, we want to work on a new HTML5 codex that we try and get past Rob McQueen. <laughs> uh, that'll be a, <laughs> a good challenge. Um, we want to do on-demand de on, on uh, downloadable debug info, which will help with crash reports in Flatpak applications, so people are not having to download gigabytes of debug info to generate crash reports. Uh, we want to improve the checks in the manifest and try and publish them to some sort of central place where people can just navigate to and see uh, what vulnerabilities are, are currently affecting FreeDesk SDK rather than having to check CI and stuff like that, so maybe in the wiki or on maybe a website or something like that. Uh, we're going to migrate to free desktop infrastructure. Um, which is currently, I think, work in progress, and we're going to try and do some more of that in the BOF. Uh, we want to, like I said earlier, we want to improve tracking of the size of the SDK to make sure we don't uh, bloat it again. Um, so that's something we need to try and figure out how to do metrics and stuff inside CI, which we don't really have any ideas on that yet, but it's just uh, something we're quite interested in. Um, Valentin's actually worked on a snap runtime as well, which is currently under review. Um, so maybe in the future we're going to have Redesp SDK uh, using snaps, but that's waiting on some support for app armor specifications from a, a canonical side. Um, we also have uh, some reference bootable images, and we now have one that has OS tree support, um, thanks to someone who works uh, in our community, Pedro, um, so that's quite cool. There's an MR open, hopefully we're going to merge that quite soon, yeah, so that's quite an exciting thing for us. I want to say thanks as well to everyone who's obviously helped out, some really big contributors. We've got a few sponsors for like runners and things like that, so it's always nice to thank people who help us out. So freedesktop.org um, for providing us access to their infrastructure. Packet.net give us some really beefy arm runners, so they're actually the most powerful in our, our fleet. Um, OSU Open Source Labs, they give us some pretty beefy x86 runners as well, so um, we're, quite, we're quite big on runners because if someone opens an MR, they don't have to sort of uh, kill the laptop with compilation. You know, we, we do it all in, in CI, so we need these big runners to keep up with the, with the demand. Um, CodeFink, they sponsored us to be here and stuff, so quite a lot of stuff and support from them. And then some of our big contributors, Emerson, Seppo, Matthew, Abderahim, who was hoping would be here but is not, uh, Jordan Petridas, uh, Javier and Tom, and then everyone else's open bug, bug reports and, and use for the SDK. Uh, thank you very much. We also have a boff on Tuesday uh, in the morning in room five if anyone wants to come and ask any questions or help with any of the stuff in the future milestones. And yeah, um, you can scan that and that'll take you to the GitLab and if anyone's got any questions, uh, feel free uh, to ask. Thank you. Oh, what kind of uh, servers uh, are used 
to build official uh, binaries of FreeDesktop SDK, which architectures do you support currently? Oh, so you uh, do you provide binary builds of the SDK uh, and how do you build them? Uh, which machines do you use uh, for that? Do we provide binaries basically? Do we what? Sorry. Provide binaries? It's just the OS tree. Uh, yeah, yeah. We so provide an OS tree checkout in FlatHub that you can use and, and shell into using Flatpak. You can use the Docker images as well. Um, I think we do host a binary image on our CI, which, which you can download as an artifact, and we use a tool called Buildstream um, to build those to build those images. Does that if, answer the question? No, it, is, it doesn't ask, uh, answer the question. If I want to reproduce your binary, how many CPU cores, memory, disk space would I need? Um, you can do it on a normal laptop. It'll take a, a few hours, but you could do it on your laptop. Uh, what oh. if I want to reproduce uh, the SDK on some other architecture, for example, the 64-bit uh, ARM? What are the requirements there? Uh, I'm not sure. Not, we've not tested doing that. Uh, I mean, we provide the CI for you to rebuild it, and you can check out um, the artifact. Buildstream has a cache, so if you're building it locally, you're not actually going to rebuild stuff because Buildstream's already cached it in, in its source. So rather than rebuilding something that's reproducible, it'll just download it from the cache. So you're not actually going to rebuild it on your machine. I mean, you could do, but I don't see why you would, because we, we cache those artifacts. Um, Are your binaries uh, reproducible? Uh, so we have been trying to test that. Uh, there are a few things that were not reproducible, but most of it, it was reproducible. But it's very hard to say it's reproducible, because you really have to use lots of different machines to get to the point that you are sure that it's reproducible because there is one change that you have never seen, like something weird. You use another machine, for example, it might make a, a different binary, but if you rebuild several times the same machine, it's always the same binary, for example. So uh, we are a bit stuck on saying that it's reproducible. We don't know for sure. We have tried to fix as much problem that we had, and I think uh, the only problem was with Python. Uh, the Python uh, binary uh, pre the, the 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 bit uh, uh, the file that are precompiled for uh, uh, Python. They sometimes have some hash tables that are ordered entries are ordered in a different way or something like that. This is the only thing that I know that is not so participable. There might be other things. We have not found the problems. Okay, thank you. Hi there. Uh, it's a bit of an elementary slash dense question, but can you talk about the support, support guarantees that you're making around the SDK, so support lifetimes and um, yeah. sort of what's, what you envisage is going to happen at the end of life when you decide this, this security support is no longer sustainable? We, uh, we guarantee each release for two years for bug fixes and CVE reports. So 18.08 will be continued to be supported for the next year when we release 19.08. Um, we also actively do the CI checks for CVE and updates and stuff like that to try and keep on top of it. Um, we do document it in a bit more detail in the wiki on the GitLab as well if you wanted to read the official uh, stuff. So I work for a company which makes its money uh, selling subscriptions to a Linux platform for ISVs to develop against. Uh, through that money, we fund a lot of GNOME developers and you know, GNOME development in general. Uh, why would I uh, encourage ISVs to develop against a competing Linux distribution performance SDK? Um, uh, so <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, we, we don't, we're not a distro, if that sort of answers the question. We're just a, to, a tool set for developing the applications, although we could, you, could, you could use it to develop, say, a bootable image for, for testing, but we don't aim to be a distro. I don't know if I've understood the question 100% though. 
I mean, it, it is a run the, the things that are in your runtime are things that are in our platform. And so our plat like, you know, the platform is something that we want uh, ASVs to develop against. Um, this is a different platform. Yeah. Uh, I guess, did you engage distro developers in, in this? It seems like uh, it's set, set up basically uh, as a, we've got the one thing for everybody, but actually adding more fragmentation. Um, we, we took the original runtime that was developed for Fatlock applications, and we've not changed it much since then. We've slimmed it down a bit and removed stuff. So um, I don't know if Alex maybe knew why we chose those set of dependencies, mainly just to satisfy Flatpak apps. Um, and then our involvement was using Buildstream um, to try and improve that development process. I, didn't, I don't think we've engaged any distros in discussions around that, um, but any of like, the Docker stuff or the bootable images is mainly just so people can test their apps in something that we guarantee is built by us and is well, re reproducible to an extent that we can, we can guarantee, not that we want people to use that to run the applications, if that makes sense. Um, may, maybe if you have time to come to the BOF, maybe it'd be good to discuss that for, yeah, I, for I a little while. Yeah, I'm leaving, but I would like to talk more. Any other questions? In that case, thank you very much. Thank you.